Hello and welcome to Basic Electronics, episode 17. So, I'm sure many of you have seen this amp before. Look familiar? It's the LM386 amp from Basic Electronics, episode 11, I think. And, uh, basically, this is a very versatile amp. Built it, works great. But it's not that great for music use. You have to have an external speaker. Um, just a lot of problems with this one for music that makes this kind of a pain to use. That's why I took this computer speaker and a similar amp and merged the two so that I get pretty good computer speakers, believe it or not. I'll go more into details. Basically, I have some old computer speakers. These are like 15 years old. So, uh, inside there is an amp chip. It was about 2 watts per channel. It was a stereo chip. And it worked okay. It wasn't very loud. It had some other problems with it. So there was no way to adjust the gain. That was my problem. So, I took and built, I, I went and built a LM386 amp to use as a preamp for this circuit. And basically, I, I use the exact same circuit. Schematic will be um yeah, it just amplifies the sound amplifies the input signal from an iPod or phone or something and then passes it through another amp the amp that was built into this originally to add some more power to it. Uh, make it able to drive bigger speakers than this could. It doesn't really... So basically the amp inside the original amp didn't really amplify much as it did just give you more power behind the signal. Which is basically what amplifying does but it's hard to explain. It didn't really give you loudness. It gave you... How am I trying to say it? It didn't give you loudness. It gave you power. Well, now I have both. I can control the game with this chicken head knob. So you could essentially plug a guitar into this, have a portable practice amp, and uh, use it for that as well. Inside... There is a 4 ohm speaker. I'm considering upgrading it to an 8 ohm, which all might which might help with sound clarity issues that I'm having. On the front there's a the original volume control knob, a tone control knob, and uh on the back there's the amplifier in, the original input. Like this was the input that originally came with it. So you can still use this as original computer speakers if you wanted for whatever reason. Then there's also the amplifier in, which goes through the LM386 amp, which is in here, and sends the signal into this input. There's the original output, and then this cuts out the speaker in here, so that you can have exter two external speakers, or one external speaker and this speaker. Which is great, because you could take this along with you, and plug in some external speakers if you would somehow have them. Just laying around. Um, yeah, that's about it. It'll accept anywhere from 9 to 12 volts input, or 9 to 15, I believe. I'm using a 12 volt power supply from an old printer. It's a just standard 2.1 millimeter power jack. And um, I'm using center positive because that's how this was originally wired, and I wasn't going to mess with that. Center positive is really a pain because I believe most things are center negative. If you know, what I'm trying to say is basically there is the hole in the middle of this is connected to positive. Most circuits have that as negative, so it's kind of a pain. You have to work around that. So now I'm going to take this hacked iPod. It's I took an old iPod Nano and put Rockbox on it. Search it on Google and you can learn all you would ever want to learn about it. 
I'm now going to go to the files and look for some music. And because it seems like every time I use copyrighted music, I get nailed with, I get nailed by the copyrighted music police. I'm gonna use the soundtrack from a video game. If you can name the video game that this is from, I will be very impressed. You don't win anything, but anyway, if you can name the video game that this is from, I will be very impressed. And I'm not gonna put it in the tags either. Anyway. Uh, get this set up here. There we go. Should be good to go. So, I'm going to turn the power on. And, oh, of course I have to turn the power strip on. That makes sense. Turn the power on. It stays on. You can hear a slight buzzing. I'll turn it up so you can hear it. Okay. But the volume is all the way down. Right now on the iPod, I'm going to turn the volume down to about a quarter. Maybe a third. And now I'm going to press play. Now you can't hear anything yet. Turn the volume up. Okay, so right now you can barely hear anything. This is... You could hear how distorted that was. I'm using the amp that was built into this thing, and it sucks. So I'll take this, plug it into the LM386, hear how much louder that is? Stock amp? I don't know if you can hear that or not. Plug it into the LM386 amp. So, as you can see, huge improvement. Just doesn't distort at all. It actually cuts down on distortion because you don't have to turn this up as much. So it, it's actually more power efficient to have the LM386, believe it or not, even though it's another chip. It'll save your phone or iPod battery. Um, so, that's about it. Now, we're going to try some external speakers. I have this one wired up to, actually I'll use this one. This one is it's just a stereo plug, or a mono plug, with wires attached to it going over here through about six alligator clips, which someone will probably complain about in the comments because, oh, alligator clips don't transmit the sound quality, I don't know, it sounds fine to me. Over to a speaker, over here. You can't really see it because it's off camera, but it's for my stereo my big stereo that I actually use. Now I'm going to plug the, this into the output, the secondary output. So, right away, you gotta make sure that it's gonna work. One second. Okay, so that's working. Now we're gonna press play. You're probably not gonna hear a whole lot of difference because this speaker is 10 feet away and the microphone it's, you're not going to hear it compared to this. But, anyway. Anyway, over there it's working. But right now, sound is still coming out of here. What if I have a second external speaker? Well, I can use this other speaker from my stereo and plug that into the secondary output that I hacked into this thing. So, basically, I'm going to, right now, this is going to cut out the internal speaker and send the signal from that into the external speaker. So, you probably can't hear the difference because literally the speakers are two feet apart. But now, one second. probably, you can, it's going through the external speakers, not through this speaker. So now, this is just acting as an amplifier. And I did that to make it much more versatile and useful for my needs. So, overall, it's a great amp. 
I don't really use the gain much when listening to music because re really it's pretty much useless. But I threw the knob on there anyway because it was included in the circuit and I figured, why not? Everything I did just in Sharpie, I'll shut it off and give you a closer look actually. So unplug everything from all the various jacks. Check something. Okay. Now inside, make sure you can see it. There's the 12 volt in or power in. I call it 12 volt in because that's what I typically use. There's the output one, which if you plug something into there, it'll sound will still come out of this speaker. It's just a secondary output. Then there's an output two, which cuts out the speaker and sends it through another speaker, which is kind of nice sometimes if you want to not use this speaker and use another one. Um, also, there's the original input, then there's the LM386 amp input, and there's also a gain knob, it's a potentiometer. On the front there's volume, there's tone adjust, pretty straightforward. Anyway. This hack took less than an hour, including the time that it took to build this amplifier. I'm getting good at building these LM386 amps. I've built like four of them now. So, I've got a process down. Anyway, this is a really simple hack. Highly recommend it. Save. It's just really nice because I recycled something better than this, better than this originally. So, if I made two things better and made it more space and power efficient, I consider it a good hack. So I, this is something I highly recommend trying out. If I recommend building an LM386 amp, for sure. I also recommend just taking a pair of computer speakers, plugging the output of this into the input of this, and see what it does. Worst thing that happens is it doesn't make any improvement and it makes everything sound like crap. Which is what happened. This is actually the second set of computer speakers I tried. This set is what I wanted to use, but these I can't figure out how to get open without destroying them, and I, they also suck just hooked up to this thing. So, experiment, go try it out. Anyway, highly recommend the hack. Um, need to wrap this up soon. Uh, I also created a Twitter account for PotatoGun96. Just type it in, PotatoGun96. There's a link to it on the homepage of my, or it's, there's a link to it on my YouTube page. I'll be posting updates, projects and stuff. Some of it is probably not going to make actual videos. So you'll be able to hear about projects that I'm doing outside of basic electronics. Like for instance, this power supply, this voltage regulator, those are never going to be made into videos anytime soon. But you'll be able to hear all about them if you're if you're interested. So type it in, Potato Gun 96 on Twitter. Go check it out. That's gonna do it for Basic Electronics episode 17. I hope you have a nice day, and want, I want you to go hack something. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Have a nice day.